guys. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some sunscreen spray recommendations. This was requested. In general, I kind of try and steer people away from sprays and towards creams and lotions. The reason for this is that sunscreen sprays are a little bit less reliable in terms of the fact that you honestly don't have a good sense of how much you're getting on your skin, if you're getting enough on the skin and so we don't have a good sense of how reliable they are. So I always try and steer people towards creams and lotions. They're a lot more reliable in terms of the application and they're less susceptible to failure. At baseline, consumers under apply sunscreen, we know that, but it becomes even more worrisome with a spray where you end up losing a lot of the product to the atmosphere. It doesn't actually get on your skin. Remember, you need uh, roughly an ounce to cover the all body surface areas um, as a shot glass full. Um, and so a typical like six ounce, a six ounce spray bottle is gonna, should get you six total body applications. But people end up like spraying a lot of the product, not necessarily getting it on the skin, it ends up going out into the atmosphere. That's really a concern about sprays. But the studies show that patients prefer sprays and sticks actually to creams and lotions. Obviously before you go out, you wanna put sunscreen on while you're inside before you actually go out. That way it can set up on your skin so you have a protective film before you go out in the sun. Um, so definitely apply it before you, before you go out. And that way applying it inside, there's less you know, wind and whatnot for you to blow it all around. But as you're reapplying it while you're outdoors, which is fine to reapply outside, you don't have to like necessarily go indoors. While you're reapplying it outside, try and you know time it when it's not windy, because uh, that can make it obviously harder to get it onto your skin. And then make sure you you hold the nozzle, make sure you hold the nozzle close to the skin so that you can actually apply it directly to the skin and do a couple of passes back and forth. The reason for that is that if you don't do multiple passes, you're gonna get skip areas and it's gonna end up streaky. This is really important also if you use sticks, same issue can happen with sticks like sprays is that you get skip areas. So do a few passes, um, that can help. Many uh, sunscreens, that are in spray forms, they have alcohol denaturant. That's not a bad ingredient. It's needed to aerosol, it's needed to solubilize the filters and, and, and whatnot. But as you're spraying these, do not spray them near an open flame. That can be potentially very dangerous. Uh, so if you're out by a barbecue grill, step away. Uh, so not, you don't wanna spray them near an open flame. Could be very dangerous. Alcohol is very flammable. Plus, you know, some of the other stuff in, in aerosols is also flammable. So just, just stay away from fire and stay away from wind. And even though you're probably using the spray to avoid having to use your hand, after you spray it, just rub it in anyways. Uh, that way you get, you get a good even application, reduces the issue of skip areas um, and is much better. So that would be, those are some tips for how to use sprays effectively. The other tip when it comes to sprays is actually don't settle for SPF 30 go much higher. Remember, an issue with sunscreen is that people under apply them. That's potentially gonna be even more of an issue with the spray. And we have evidence that higher SPF helps compensate for that. In that if you use an SPF of 50 and you're a little light handed with it, you will at least get an SPF 30, which is, which is what you, you know, kind of the lower end of what is recommended. Um, all right. The one that I recommend to you guys is La Roche-Posay Anthelos SPF 60 Ultra Light Sunscreen Lotion. This is fragrance-free. It has uh, La Roche-Posay's uh, stabilized avabenzone. Remember, avabenzone is if it's not stabilized, can degrade, and, you know, isn't as, isn't as useful. So it's stabilized. Um, it also has a number of filters for UVB. Now included in that is oxybenzone. So, you know, that's unfortunate because oxybenzone you know, people are worried about its implications for coral reef health. You might not be able to get away with this one and it might not be your, your top choice. For those of you in the UK, I recommend another La Roche-Posay spray for you guys. 
the Anthelos Invisible Kids Mist SPF 50. This is a good one. It's free of fragrance. They have some other other sprays in, on the UK La Roche Posay site that have have fragrance. I always recommend choosing a fragrance free one. In this case, it's the kids. Yeah, this one's great. It's got um, bimetrizinol in it, I believe, tinosorb, and I mean, it's got much more stable UVA filters in comparison to the American one, because you guys know we don't have, have those filters here yet. Maybe one day we'll get them. Anyways, yeah, that is, that's a great um, choice for those of you in the UK, the, the kids, the kids mist. You don't have to be a kid to use it, use it, but yeah. All right, the second sunscreen that I recommend is the Banana Boat Simply Protect Kids SPF 50 Spray. The Simply Protect line by Banana Boat is good. It's a good affordable uh, face and body sunscreen. Um, it's a little bit stickier, so give it some time and allow it to absorb, but I, I really like that one. It is water resistant, as is the La Roche Posay, as are the La Roche Posay ones. Another recommendation though for a spray sunscreen is the Altruist Invisible Spray. This has Juvenal T150 for UVB, it has Avabenzone for UVA, it has uh, Iscatrizinol for UVB and some UVA. It's not as impressive in terms of the filters as the La Roche Posay one I mentioned or the Altruist Creams and Lotions. Creams? I think they only have creams or lotions. Anyways. I digress. Yeah, it's not as impressive as those. It has fewer filters, but it's a great option for those of you in the UK seeking a spray. It's SPF 50 and has good UVA protection as well. So it's a good choice for those of you in the UK. If you live in the States, you can buy Altruist sunscreens. You just go onto Amazon UK and that is a reliable, safe way to get them. Um, the Altruist website actually will direct you to Amazon UK. So you can go to Amazon UK and buy them there. You just have to pay shipping and duty, so they're more expensive. They're still actually pretty affordable, even with the shipping and duties. And remember, a portion of the proceeds of their sunscreens go to a great charity under the same sun. Um, all right, another one that I recommend to you guys is by Replenix. It's their sheer physical broad spectrum SPF 50. This is a mineral sunscreen. So this is really good if you have sensitive skin. It will leave a bit of a cast, but it's actually not bad. The next sunscreen is the MD Solar Science Quick Dry. Now this is a chemical sunscreen, so it's not gonna leave a cast. It's SPF 40, um, absorbs very quickly in the skin and doesn't have that kind of greasy, um, residue so that's a good one and then elta md makes a spray that's pretty good it's a combination sunscreen it has zinc and octinoxate in it so there'll be a little bit of a cast but not as not as intense as the replenix sheer physical which is a which is only zinc oxide the elta md has a little little bit more sheer of a of a cast so not as not as noticeable water resistant spf 45 really good for sensitive skin it's honestly looks similar to UV clear. Um, so it's a really good one. It dries kind of matte um, if you're using it on the face. And then last but not least is Dr. Dennis Gross is sheer mineral SPF 50. This is zinc only like the Replenix. It has Emblica and Q10 in it as did Replenix. I don't know if I mentioned that, which are antioxidants. You guys, I mean, antioxidants in sunscreens, they don't actually end up we don't think, at least the study suggests, they don't end up getting into the skin to scavenge free radicals because of the film forming agents and the sunscreen kind of keep them out. So, I mean, I mean, it's in there. You know, Q10 has been shown to reduce the burden of, of damage from UV, but you kind of want to put it on first, allow it to absorb in the skin, and then put your sunscreen on before you go outside. That's, that's really a better way rather than taking rather than seeking a sunscreen that has Q10 in it, because those film forming agents are just gonna keep it out. Now, if you're using these on the, on the face, be careful. Uh, you don't wanna inhale them or ingest them or get them in your eyes. Um, and so close your eyes and nose and mouth, but ideally, honestly, for applying them to your face, you apply it, you, you spray it into your hands and then rub it onto your face. That's a better way for the face, especially. Um, and then, as a reminder for the body, do multiple passes and then after you're done spraying, rub it in. That way you get a good layer. And that, you know, that's 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 a that's a good way to use these and they, they can be effective. 
to what extent they are as effective as body creams and lotions honestly you guys we don't have the data on that that's why i'm always a little like mm, i don't know about sprays um, but I do realize that they are more convenient, so I wanted to give you guys some options here, and I think these are all really good. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.